Uh, the chief inspector of schools, Sir Michael Wilshaw, has been criticised for suggesting parents should be fine if they miss their children's parents' evening or don't make them do their homework. He said it's up to teachers to tell parents they're a bad parent. So I just wondered if you would fit into that category of a bad parent. Have you ever missed a parents' evening? Uh, have your children ever refused to do their homework? W- what happens then? Give us a call if you've been there. 03453 00956. Let's get a word with Katie Ivans from the Campaign for Real Education. Morning, Katie. Good morning. And also Andrew Allison from the Freedom Association, which fights for individual liberty. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Uh, what do you make of this then? The, the, the potential power for head teachers to fine bad parents? Is, this, is that directed to me? It is. is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I missed my my son's last parents' evening through a work commitment. Thankfully, my wife could make it. But I mean, would they have threatened to fine us because of that? Um, it's it, it's totally wrong. It's it, it's it's like the uh, the example that they gave on reading. I mean, who decides that, that uh, parents are not reading enough to to their children? I mean, should parents keep a diary? And then who's going to decide? Who's going to be the judge and jury in all of this? Head teachers. It, it's just nanny the nanny state gone mad. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, this business about having to read to your children, which, I, you know, I think, by the way, is a good thing, and I, do it, I do it with my kids, but it, it's all a bit big brotherish, isn't it? You know, we, they have our kids for several hours during the day and then tell us how we have to interact with them during the evening. Well, this is just all stick, uh, and, and there's no carrot there at all. Um, I, mean, I mean, occasionally, my son's 15 years old, and I mean, occasionally he's got into a little bit of trouble at school over the years, and the, and the school's called me, we've had an amicable discussion, and we decided on a course of action, and it's worked very well. But what Michael Wilshaw seems to be suggesting is, is just stick, stick, stick all the way. And, I mean, if I went into school because my son had done something wrong or he hadn't done his homework, and, and the teacher said to me, you're a bad parent, I think I'd be very offended by that. And rightly so. Stay there, Andrew. Let's bring Katie in. Katie, what do you make of this? Well, first of all, I've got a great deal of sympathy for Michael Wilshaw because he's got a terribly difficult job to do, but he really needs to focus on his job. And that is to make sure that his inspectors get things right. And he certainly shouldn't be turning on the parents. And we have to, it's quite interesting because if you look at the statistics, the children who sort of underachieve most are children whose parents have actually had a British education. Uh, the children of immigrants tend to do much better. So we, re- in many cases, Cases. Parents themselves, they can't read to their children. They haven't been taught to read properly themselves, and they don't have the confidence to support their children. And frankly, um, Mr. Wilshaw needs Sir Michael, sorry, Sir Michael Wilshaw needs to look at what his inspectors are doing because they're tending to go into well, in many cases, go into schools, call them outstanding. If they label a huge percentage of their children, up to ninety percent of their children as having something called special educational needs, which then get sort of, you know, uh, blamed on the parents, and then you. Have to, you know, very therapeutic people have to work with the parents and all this sort of thing. They should just get on with educating the children. They should look at primary schools where they seat children around tables interacting with each other instead of facing the teacher being taught. This doesn't work and it fosters bad behaviour in children. Then they say the children are badly brought up. There's too much of a tendency to blame parents and also to shut them out of a school. Parents turn up at school gates. The school gates are shut until the moment the school is over. Then they're let in, then they're more or less chased out. There's some very bad attitudes to parents that exist in schools. Interesting. Uh, Andrew, uh, only the other day as well, it was mooted that uh, it's part of their manifesto, the Conservative Party is considering uh, introducing compulsory parenting lessons if uh, uh, children don't do particularly well in the classroom and that uh, parents who are on benefits might have their benefits taken away if they don't attend these compulsory parenting classes. So all of a sudden... There's a lot of heat on mum and dad, and all they're doing is sending their kids to school. There is a lot of heat on mum and dad, and as anybody knows who is a parent, it, it's not an easy job at times. It does all depend on the child, but it, 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 can, it can be quite tough. I mean, also in, uh, introduced in the Queen's speech is the, is the so-called Cinderella law, which, see, which seeks to, uh, to quantify uh, emotional love. I mean, what happens if a, if a parent is told by their, 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 their child's school that they're not doing their homework, you'd be threatened with a fine. Um, they then start getting tough with their children, uh, showing a bit of tough love, making sure that, uh, that the children does the homework. Uh, are they then going to be accused of some sort of emotional abuse as well because they're not showing enough love to their child? No, that's a, very, that's a very interesting question. And, and Katie, you know, there is, you know, maybe it's just my 
darkest imaginings, but there does seem to be something sinister about the, the law that Andrew mentioned. You know, yes, clearly, clearly children should be loved by their parents, but well, it, how I'm you sorry. quantify <laughs> that and legislate for it? You can't, absolutely not. But anyway, it's not for the state. Sorry, it's not. This is something of Freedom Association, by the way. It's not for the state to determine how parents bring up their children. Parent, there'll be good parents, bad parents, middling parents, confused parents, parents with their own problems, and really, the state should just keep out of it. And there's, underlying it is there's this idea that a child's um, educational fate is determined by the time the child is age three. And there are pictures, you know, of a child's brain with uh, black patches all over it. And, uh, you know, this is held up as an example of how the child has been irrevocably damaged by its, its early upbringing. And therefore, the parents must all have parenting classes. This is complete nonsense. Brains change. There's something called the plasticity of the brain. So they should just keep off this and just make sure that the schools actually teach the children and teach them properly. Um, and and they, they, schools have what's called, um, which some of us call, a therapeutic model of what they term education. It's not education. It's not teaching. It's t- tre- treating every child as a case. And of course, be- behind every child that's a case, there's a, a parent who is a case. And I'm sorry, this has got to stop. So, so Michael Wilshire really has just got to focus on his job and make sure that his inspectors have got it right. I mean, people tell me that, that you know, bad head teachers become inspectors. He's got a big job on his hands, and I think he should just stick to it and focus on it. I have a lot of sympathy for him, but he's got a job to do. And he should yeah, do I mean, uh, Andrew, thinking about it from Sir Michael Wilshaw's point of view, you know, he presumably gets reports back from schools, he knows the education system in and out, and he will know, as most of us would understand, that whether a parent nurtures their child and encourages them to learn or whether they don't, can play a big part in their education. I suppose from his point of view, he'd say, look, I'm just trying to make parents engage with their kids' schooling so that the kids turn out better in the end. Well, first of all, can I just say I completely agree with, with what's just been said. I mean, the, the state should just keep out of this. And yes, of course, parents should be encouraging their children all the time, but there are ways uh, and means to do this. As has been previously stated, you know, parents are locked out of schools at times. They, they stood outside the school gates waiting for their children to come out, and, and, and that's about it. Schools need to engage with parents more. And, uh, and and when you have that sort of relationship going, then then that works to the benefit of the child. If it feels like the school is coming down on a parent with a stick all the time, then that just antagonises the relationship between parents uh, and the school. And of course, that has a det- detrimental impact on the child as well. Interesting to speak to you. Thank you for joining us today. Andrew Allison from the Freedom Association. Many thanks as well to Katie Ivans uh, from the Campaign for Real Education, both in agreement that Sir Michael Wilshaw is out of order. But you look at it from his point of view, he sees schools underperforming, he sees children underperforming, and it drew attention in particular to children of white working class families. And he said that people, particularly members of the white working class, don't value education enough. So it might sound like a bit of a big stick, mightn't it, to to punish children and to punish their parents if they don't attend parents' evening, to punish parents if the children don't do the homework. But is that one way to ensure that parents do get involved in their kids' schooling? Would you accept a punishment? from a a teacher uh, if you didn't attend a parents' night or your kid didn't do their homework. 03453 009956. Give me a call or text 81333. Start your message with WM. Start your message with WM.